Today's an exciting day because I'm out in my personal soybean field and I'm gonna be planting my first ever soybean plot. The way that the test plot works is I'm breaking up our 24 row planter into three different sections. So I'm gonna have eight row entries of I believe 26 different varieties of soybean field, soybean varieties across this two and a half acres. Before I got the camera on, I made my first pass. So my first three entries are already in. Now the crew is sucking out what is remaining of the seed that we just planted. And then we'll start dumping in the next three varieties of soybean seed into my test plot. Since I'm the guy running the planter today, it's my job to keep entering the new seed varieties that we're entering into the planter. So they gave me a sheet here of all the varieties we're planting today. So I'm gonna go ahead and input the next three and by the looks of it, they might be waiting for me. And here we go making the second pass of the, our soybean test plot. There's gonna be a total of nine different passes we're gonna make, 26, 27 different varieties, depends how it plays out. But we're making pass number two right now. I always think this is cool. You can see on our iPad here, I have each individual color, a different variety that we're planting. So by the end of our test plot, this is gonna look like a huge color wheel of all the different varieties we'll be planting. With this test plot, so the results are as fair as humanly possible, I'm planting them all at a static 160,000 individual soybean seeds per acre. Obviously, with the three different brands, they all maybe have a little bit different recommendations of how many soybeans they want per acre, but to make it fair, that's what I'm doing. So the three different brands are Asgro, Stein, and Latham soybeans. I'm planting them all, like I said, at 160,000. Here we go now with pass number four. We're like a well-oiled machine. We have a total of five different people. The reps from the seed company got to get going here in about an hour and a half. So we're trying to slam this plot in, in as quick as possible. Oops, just kick a little dirt. It'll all disappear. I should also mention that to, again, keep things as fair as possible across all different companies, all of the soybeans are treated. That is why you can see this little soybean is red. Soybeans are not red. They have all been treated. They've all been treated with very similar, not quite the exact same treatment, but they've all been treated. Starting to build up quite a chest of all the different varieties we have planted so far. Starting to look very colorful. This time while they get the planter, switch over to the next three varieties of Stein soybeans. I just want to talk about the benefits to me as a farmer, being able to have this test plot on my own farm. I get to have first-hand research, first-hand experience, seeing the new varieties that are coming out in 2026. I get to experience them, see them all throughout the growing season like I said, on my own personal farm. The second big benefit is all the soybean seed that I'm planting in my test plot, I get for free from the seed companies, which I don't know if you could say really for free. Like I'm spending, it's gonna take us about three hours to do this test plot. Not only that, but then when we come back at harvest, rather than taking a huge swath with the soybean header, I'm only gonna be taking eight rows plus each individual variety will then have to get weighed with a wagon so it's kind of a compensation for a little bit of our time the big benefit for me the big reason I like doing it is seeing firsthand what some of the new varieties are looking like going into 2026 and away we go on our next three entries maybe yeah it was just a small error nothing major we're going So we just are going to finish the stein with a 24 EH32. Then we're going to stick a couple of Latham in there, a 7, okay. an L 1721 and a... And this will be it then. Then those will be the last two entries. Yep. Okay. So we just got two Latham numbers. We just finished, I believe, a dozen stein numbers. 
So we'll get the planner cleaned out here, enter those Latham numbers up in the monitor, and the test plot will be done. Making the last pass of my 27 entry plot. Got them all listed here on the iPad. It'll be nice because now I'll be able to monitor these different, three different seed brands, 27 different varieties to help make selections for next year just a little bit easier. And if you want to see that, I plan on covering some different things in this plot all season long. So hit that subscribe button down below as we make the last 10 feet of my first ever test plot. With the test plot done, my 240 acre soybean field is now completely planted for this upcoming growing season. But we still have a fair amount of corn acres of my family's farm that need to be planted. And with this being our only planter, we got to get all the beans sucked and cleaned out of here. That way we can switch it back over to corn. So I'm going to fold up, we'll bring the planter back home, and then we'll start loading it up with some corn. Before we can head out and go start planting any more corn, Dad and I are in the truck here. First of all, the local 4-H the local 4-H club stopped off, dropped us off some burgers. So we're gonna have those. We're gonna go see if the next field that we're gonna plant corn at is ready to be able to start digging. That way we can hopefully plant it. And it looks like we got a pulled pork sandwich for lunch. So thank you to the local 4-H club. This is the field we're contemplating digging. I can already tell you, based off the drive here. Let's see if you can see it in the background right here. I'm thinking there's a good chance we're gonna be working this field. I've made it back to the farm. Actually, I'm sitting inside our 9R currently. We're gonna go work that field we were just at. The planter is parked over there by the shop. We don't have any ground that has already worked, so we can't go out and start planting yet until we work the ground. So that field is the next field we're gonna to head to. We'll start working there and then potentially work one more field that way we can stay at least a day ahead of the planter with the digger. We'll get the digger unfolded here. And once we start digging the field, I do have something kind of interesting I want to talk to you guys about once we start digging the field and have a little bit of time to chat. I jumped out, taking a couple of steps here behind. Let's see what things are looking like. It is looking really good. This is going to be good stuff to plant into. I'm plenty deep. It looks like I'm about three, three and a half inches deep, which is what it's saying. We're only gonna be planting two inches deep, so it's good to go. The thing I wanted to share with you is related to ChatGPT. If you haven't heard of it, ChatGPT is basically what I consider like another brain. Like it's a brain of the internet. It conglomerates a lot of information and spits out an answer. The thing I wanted to share is one thing that I asked ChatGPT earlier today, actually on the way to this field. ChatGPT is loaded up here on my phone. We're going to speak into my phone and ask it the question. With all of the AI and automation that's coming in agriculture, I'm currently sitting in a tractor bouncing from end to end of the field. And I'm wondering, in five years, do you think I will be doing this or do you think automation and AI will take over and an average farm will just need less people because it's not going to need as many seats or butts in seats of tractor cabs? What are your thoughts? Make it pretty short. In five years, automation and AI will definitely reduce the need for manual tasks, but it won't eliminate the need for skilled farmers. You'll likely spend less time physically driving and more time managing and optimizing operations. So, while the day-to-day -day might change, your expertise will still be essential. Now we'll ask the follow-up question. So do you think in five years it's safe to say that what three people do full-time, one person could do full-time on a farm? in terms of running equipment during the busy season with all the automation? Yes, it's likely. Automation and AI could streamline operations so that one person can handle what used to require a team. That means fewer butts in seats and more focus on managing and optimizing from a central hub. You heard the answer. I don't take ChatGPT's advice on everything for my personal life, but I would say with what they said there at the end, it could replace a lot of jobs in agriculture, a lot of routine work, especially like what I'm doing now. It definitely makes a person think what the future is going to look like. Obviously, we don't know until we get there, but I have a pretty good gut feeling and so does the AI of what it might look like.
we are finished with this 160 acre field. I'm doing a one over of everything on the digger, making sure all the shovels are still looking good. That's one thing that autonomy has yet to solve is being able to see from the cab or all the cameras they put on the tractors that nothing is wrong on the tillage tool and by the looks of it, everything looks good. So we are done working all of our corn ground for the year. This is the last field of corn that needs to be planted, likely do that tomorrow. Now we'll jump over to going and working some more soybean acres for this upcoming year. Here's the field we're gonna be working. Dad's already made pretty good headway on it. His line is right about there that he's already got done, but we'll get started clear on the other side. In the matter of 10 minutes, it took us to fold up and drive from that other field, which is one mile to the north, unfold back in this field, drive a mile south, we're back to doing it. Things are looking good behind here. There's plenty of moisture. This is that rich, dark black Minnesota soil that we like, that we'll be planting soybeans into once we finish. I finished the inside pass of the field. This is the side dad did, so you can't see it on there. But now that I need to complete the outside edges, which we call the headlands, We'll select a new guidance track. That way I'll have GPS. I won't have to manually steer along this crickety old fence that I've hit about 18 times. So we'll hit boundary fill next. And now it will create for us a brand new line that'll make us perfectly straight. And it'll take us the whole half mile. That way we don't have to steer. And there we go. There it should work along the fence. I got the field completely dug and ready to go to be planted. Now I'm walking out in one of our neighbor's fields. He planted this right before the last rain event that we had. I'm gonna dig up and see what some of the seed that looks like in here. Mm, his soil's got a pretty big crust on it from that rain. Let's see if we can find one of the corn kernels in here. Looks like there is one right here. There it is, doesn't even have a sprout on it or anything yet. I'm just kidding, this isn't one of the neighbor's fields. That's one of our fields of corn. We planted that right before the big rain event. And with that big crust on the soil, it looks like we may need to get the rotary hoe out in the coming days. That's all the tillage we're gonna get done for tonight. But there's one last thing I need to do yet today that I've yet to do. We only got eight. That bar is significantly wider than the one at the gym. So we only got eight. We'll have to keep practicing. But that's it for today's video of High Tech Farmer. We're gonna be doing some plenty tomorrow. So if you wanna see that, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And with that, that's all I got for today's video. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see ya in the next one.